Okay. Okay. Here is every single Formula One term that you might have heard explained. And to make things interesting, I'm at the beach and let's go from most common to least common term because why not? Let's make it interesting. This is Aliens in the Paddock. Grand Prix, main race of the F1 weekend. Tracks change, track laps change, number of Grand Prix in a season change. It's the main race. Sprint race, this is a short race that happens occasionally throughout the season. It's an extra race during a F1 weekend. This is much shorter than a Grand Prix. It has no pit stops and it has its own qualifying where cars get out and set the best lap times to get the best starting position on the grid, referring to the starting positions of the cars at the start of a race. Formation lap. Formation lap is an initial lap of the track before Grand Prix starts. Teams and drivers familiarize themselves with the track. It helps engineers off the track get some telemetry information about how the car's performing before a race starts, and it also helps the drivers warm up their tires. FIA, standing for Federation Internale de l'Automobile, essentially the governing body of Formula One along with a few other motorsport series across the world. They control the rules and regulations of Formula One. Line or driving line. This is the commentators referring to the fastest way for a driver through a corner or the track. Apex. This is the peak of a corner and not to be confused with a chicane. These are two tight turns directly one after each other in opposite directions, usually placed before a fast corner to slow cars down or at the end of a fast sector. Each track is divided up into three sectors, denoted by lines in their track and are used to help teams measure themselves against other teams in the same sector. These are not to be confused with zones in which you can use DRS, or the drag reduction system is a small flap on the rear wing of a car. These flaps can open in the DRS zones of a track, giving the driver's ability to increase speed by reducing drag temporarily in the DRS zones. This is an area where the rear flap DRS system can be used, DRS cannot be used anytime, it can only be used by following cars that are one second behind the car in front in a DRS zone. You might hear the commentators say DRS train. This is a series of cars in a race that are stuck in a stalemate behind each other, each being able to activate their DRS, but no one progressing for a period of time, more common on some tracks than others. All right, I'm gonna get up from here. Constructor, every team in Formula One is called a constructor pit stop where cars are required to go in order to change it to fresh or different tires. They can also have minor parts replaced, such as the front wing, if damage has happened. Pit crew, who are the mechanics and engineers waiting in the pits to execute quick pit stops for the car and driver during a race. Pit wall. Engineers and team leaders work from each team's own pit wall anytime the car is on a track to analyze performance. Box is just a shorthand for come into the pit stop. Supposedly, the term comes from the German word box and stop which just means to pit stop. You might also hear push, meaning push the car to the limit. When driving, drivers are often managing fuel, tires, and temperature, but when they are pushing, they're going as fast as the car is able to let them. But they're not usually doing this during the free practice or FP1. FP1 is the first practice session of the weekend of a Grand Prix. FP2 is the second session. FP3 is obviously the third session. This time is used to check car performance on the track and tune the car before qualifying. Lights out refers to the start of the race when the lights are turned off, indicating the race has commenced. P1 means position one, indicating either their starting position on the grid or final position during a race. P2 meaning position two, P3, position three, and so on. Not to be confused with pole position, which is the driver who set the fastest lap during qualifying and is starting at the front of the grid at the start of a race. Outlap, this is when a driver has just joined the track after a pit stop and isn't considered a full lap. Actually, this is kind of, all right, I'm in my car now. Slipstream or slipstreaming is when a car is following another car. The car in front is braking through the air, so the car behind has less wind resistance and therefore can apply its power more efficiently through the air. DNF, standing for did not finish, is a designation of a driver who is unable to complete a race, usually due to damage or engine failure or some other mechanical issue. DNS, meaning did not start. When a car and driver have successfully qualified for a race, but from that time before the Grand Prix are unable to commence, did not start. Podium, the top three drivers at the end of a race are on the podium and the people on the podium, they get the most points. The higher you place, the more points you get and they contribute to the Constructors' Championship. 
since each team or constructor has two drivers, that means they have two opportunities to win points during a Grand Prix. By the end of the season, each team with the most points wins the constructors championship. That's not to be confused with the drivers championship is the driver at the end of the season with the most points. All right, let's move on to some car stuff you might hear. Slicks. Each race, the governing body of Formula One, the FIA, will pick three different sets of tires each team is allowed to use for the race. They are hard, medium, or soft. The level of softness or hardness of each tire might change from track to track. Of course, there are different tires when it's raining. Wet. Wet tires are the tires used when the track is very wet and the drivers need to maintain grip on the track while it's actively raining hard or there's standing water on the surface of the track. Not to be confused with intermediates or inters, which are tires that are used during wet weather, but not as wet as what you would need for wet tires. Deg, which is short for degradation. In F1, the tires do not last an entire race and degrade over time. Tire degradation is a critical part to race strategy and is important for traction, which is how efficiently a car is able to transfer its power through the tires onto the track. Camber, this is the angle at which F1 teams will place the front wheels in order to improve traction and handling in certain scenarios. This can change from race to race. Lockup, this refers to when a car is still moving but the tires are not spinning, creating a flat spot on the tire. Marbles, these are bits of rubber that fly off degrading tires and sit at the edge of the tracks, usually outside of the main driving line. Graining, since tires degrade throughout the duration of a race, the surface becomes grainy. When this happens, tires become less efficient and eventually you will need to pit and change them. Downforce. The F1 cars are designed to have sufficient downward pressure throughout a race. Formula One cars are not just designed to go fast, they are designed to stick to the ground and turn excellently during a race. This has to be balanced with drag, which is the resistance a car faces as it goes faster around the track. Less drag equals more fast. Halo refers to a structural piece at the top of a Formula One car that goes around the driver's head. Implemented in 2018, it is essentially driver or cockpit protection while still keeping the open air, single seater nature of the car. Front wing. The front of the car here, if damaged during a race, this can be replaced during a pit stop. Rear wing. This is where the DRS is on a car and it is responsible for the downforce on the rear of the car. Power unit, and sometimes called powertrain, the power unit refers to the V6 engine as well as a Formula One car's energy storage and its ERS or energy recovery system. A Formula One car has a battery that can be used alongside its engine to generate power. The battery is charged during a race using the ERS through kinetic energy. Harvesting. You can see that a driver is harvesting during a race when braking. The energy that you see here can be used for a faster lap or to assist with overtaking. It can be used anytime as long as there's energy in the battery. Monocoque, it's a funny word and that's where the driver sits in an F1 car. It's also a safety shell that protects the driver from impacts. Okay, side pods. These are on the side of a car where the radiators are housed. Upgrades, these are literal upgrades a constructor team can bring to their car throughout a season. A car is not locked off at the start of the season. Upgrades and changes can be implemented throughout the season in order to improve handling and performance. The CFD or computational fluid dynamics, this often referenced tool is used by F1 designers and engineers combining simulation and math to understand the airflow around the car. Wind tunnel. This is a room which each team may have in their headquarters to help them understand the airflow around their car. The team is only allowed to put a scale model of their Formula One car in the wind tunnel and use of the wind tunnel is restricted. Not to be confused with a simulator, which is advanced software that a team can use to run different scenarios on different tracks and different car setups in order to understand how upgrades and track drivability can affect the performance of the car. Another aspect of the simulator is a physical simulated car that a simulated driver can hop into and can drive around the track in order to gather more data about upgrades, changes, conditions. The simulator is quite often operated by a team's third driver or reserve driver. Third driver or reserve driver is an additional driver on the team that is not actively racing in Grand Prix. They are there to act as a backup and also help with simulations. They're standing on the side in case a driver gets injured or sick. Clean air is effectively free and open air for a car to drive through. They're not following another car, meaning optimum aerodynamic efficiency is achieved. 
Dirty air. This is when a car is behind another car or a series of other cars creating dirty and turbulent air, meaning there isn't optimum aerodynamic efficiency. Okay, all right, that's enough in the car. All right, all right, I'm back at the aliens in the paddock desk. Steward. A group of stewards are appointed each race to ensure the race is conducted according to the FAA rules. This means making decisions, among other things, about rules, penalties and track conditions. Marshal generally volunteers. Marshals ensure the safety of drivers during a race. Their roles include clearing out the track, waving flags when instructed and ensuring cars are where they are supposed to be, such as behind the starting line at the commencement of a race. Race Director the race director is responsible for the safety of the race as well as upholding of rules and regulations of Formula One. Doing everything from monitoring the start, the race, communicating with teams about potential warnings and penalties as well as managing the safety car, which can be used to slow cars down on the track during an on-track incident. This bunches the cars up and slows them down generally why the marshals clear the track before the cars can go race again. Used alternatively to the virtual safety car or VSC is a virtual restriction on maximum speed that the cars can go during red flags. Again, while marshals generally are clearing up the track, a VSC is used in order to maintain equivalent established gaps while slowing them down, requiring cars to maintain a delta where a regular safety car will bunch everyone up, removing gaps. Delta essentially is a time difference between a previous driver's lap and perhaps their current lap. Back marker. This is a car at the back of the race, usually referred to when they are about to be lapped by front runners of the race. Undercut. A strategic move during the race, since all cars are required to pit at least once during a Grand Prix. An undercut is when a following car pits in order to gain position on the cars in front by the end of the race. Overcut. When a driver remains on track for longer in order to gain gap and positions for as long as possible before pitting. Telemetry. When the commentators say this, they're usually talking about either the system on the car or the data that has been sent from the car to the team's engineers about the car's performance whenever it is on the track. Scuderia. Literally translated from Italian meaning horse stable, often denoting an Italian racing team. Budget cap or cost cap referring to the limit of cash a team can spend operationally during a season, recently put in place in order to stop insane amounts of spending in teams. In theory, limiting spending keeps the teams more competitive. Lift and coast. A driver might be instructed to lift and coast in order to manage fuel levels left in the car. Lifting refers to the pulling off of the throttle as to not use too much fuel. Paddock. A specialized area at a race circuit where teams set up their operations during a Grand Prix. Not to be confused with a Parc Ferme, which is a secure section of the paddock where cars are kept between qualifying and Grand Prix. Teams cannot do extensive work on the cars while they're in Parc Ferme. Did I miss a critical term you hear all the time during an F1 weekend? Do you think I was wrong about one of these terms or can you think of like a better way to describe them? If you want more F1 videos, please subscribe. I'm going to do a flags video with examples, maybe a trophies video as well. Enjoy the summer break. Thanks for watching, Aliens in the Paddock.